Okay, time for a new video, and if this is the first video you've seen of mine, then thank you very much for checking it out. If you've seen videos of mine in the past, then thank you very much for returning. It's been a little while, uh, mainly because I've been focusing on other things, but I am now back. And this is going to be another instalment in my ongoing series where I take a look at older Eurovision Song Contests. Today it's the 2011 edition, which was how many years ago? 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 7 years ago? That is right, isn't it? Yes, I think so. And uh, the 2011 contest was a great year, a great contest. It was the first year in which I really got into Eurovision, if you see what I mean. I am not a hardcore fan, I've said that before, but 2011 was the first Eurovision where I was really, really, really into it, really looking forward to it, listening to the songs a lot, taking a closer look at the national finals as well. That was the first time I ever really did that. So yeah, 2011 was a big year for me in terms of my Eurovision knowledge and enjoyment of the show. As always with this series, please respect my opinions, as I will with yours. Feel free to leave comments, let me know your favourite songs and all of that business. The 2011 contest then, I have information in front of me just to make sure I don't forget anything. I also want to say apologies for the average quality of these videos and the fact that I don't edit them. So if there are awkward pauses, I apologise in advance. So yes, the 2011 contest, the 10th, the 12th and the 14th of May 2011 in Dusseldorf, Germany, because of course Germany won the year before with Satellite by Lena, Germany's second ever win. Still, they've only won twice. The hosts were Anke Engelke, who did a terrific job. She was actually born in Canada. Judith Reikers and Stefan Raab, who is a huge star in Germany, I believe. He was involved with Lena winning the year before, um, he's a TV presenter, um, a singer, uh, he represented Germany in 2000, finished 6th I think, he wrote the German entry in 1998 and was the composer, um, so, well, he wrote it so he was the composer but he was also conducting the orchestra in 1998, um, he wrote the German entry in 2004, he's been involved a lot in the past and he played a big part in Germany's win back in 2010. Anyway, the e Sprit Arena was the venue, big football venue. Um, it's not called that anymore, it's now known as the Spiel Arena, 40, not 45, 54,000 capacity, even bigger for concerts, although I think it was only somewhere in the region of 25,000 for the three shows back in 2011, uh, because of course the stage and the green room and equipment and lighting and all of that business. So, uh, for some reason this is now taking an exceptionally long time to load up. There we are. So yes, uh, not the biggest live audience ever for the Eurovision Song Contest. I think that's still 2001, but this wasn't terribly far away. Anyway, Azerbaijan won. 43 countries participated. Austria, Hungary, Italy for the first time this century, and San Marino, they all returned and I'm going to talk about the songs that didn't qualify first, beginning with semi-final one. I'm already waffling. This is great. Song one, Poland, Magdalena Tull with Jestem, which I think means I am. I think? Yes. Let's go with that. It finished last in the first semi-final, 19th place with 18 points. I mean, that is really quite harsh. Um, the song itself is not a bad pop song, but live, it wasn't quite working, it was quite messy, it fell quite flat, vocally it wasn't brilliant. It was such a big arena with such a big backdrop, you can be swallowed up by something like that, and I think Magdalena was. Still, last place, that's a little harsh, like I said. Song 2, big fan favourite at the time, Norway, Stella and Wanji, who tried this year to represent Norway again as part of a duo with Habba Habba. It finished 17th with 30 points, performed in English and Swahili. I think because of sort of her family background. Don't quote me on that. Anyway, very colourful, very fun, very catchy, very likeable. Performed well, but it was a massive flop. 
I'm not really sure why. Maybe the fact part of the song was in Swahili made a difference. Song 3, Albania. This was Feel the Passion, and it was a very passionate performance, by Aurela Gace, who won the Albanian national final, and I think had won it in the past before Albania was in the contest. Again, don't quote me on that. This is an alright song, but I've never been a big fan. 14th place, 47 points, English and Albanian. There was Fire... Uh, great vocals, but all in all, nothing that special. Song 4, Armenia. This was the first time Armenia didn't qualify after debuting in 2006. Boom Boom by Emmy. Quite a bouncy young female. There was a whole boxing theme on stage. Uh, a boxing glove seat. The dancers were wearing sort of boxing robes or whatever you want to call them. It's just a bit of a silly song. Lyrically, it's really not that good. It finished 12th with 54 points. That's one place away from qualifying. Well, one or two points away from qualifying. Song 5 was Turkey. Again, first time that they missed out on the final. Uh, I think, yes. This was a band, Yuxek Sadakat, with Live It Up. Bit of a rock song. Uh, there was a woman in a cage, I think. Um, it finished 13th. With 47 points, not bad, but not brilliant. Not one of Turkey's best, although I don't mind it. Then we move on to song 11, which was Malta. This missed out by a point. It tied with Armenia. This was Glen Vela with One Life. Again, very colourful, pop, um, rather quite camp, I would say, but not a bad song. I don't think many people really enjoy this entry though i don't think it's aged too well but nevertheless malta very nearly made the final song 12 the returning san marino this was senate with stand by it finished 16th with 34 points a ballad and a very pleasant ballad but far too dreary to qualify as simple as that song 13 was croatia this was daria with celebrate pop with just a whiff of disco about it, I would say. Uh, 15th place, 41 points. I've never been a big fan of this one. I thought the performance was a bit slipshod. There was this magic trick at the end uh, where she sort of changed outfits. Um, just rather average. Really, really is. And then song 16, Portugal. Well, I don't know what Portugal was thinking. I think there was some sort of slight political message behind this one. Omens da Luta with A Luta e Alegria, The Struggle is Joy, I think it roughly translates as, performed in Portuguese, 18th place, so not last, 22 points. It was just quite shouty, they were all holding up um, signs in with messages in various languages, they were all wearing quite unusual outfits, if I recall. Yes, not one of Portugal's best. So those are the songs that didn't qualify from semi-final one. Semi-final two, which was on the 12th of May 2011. Song three, The Netherlands. This came last, I can't believe it. Three J's, or three Yays, with Never Alone, 19th place, 13 points. Soft Rock, really nice little song. The performance may be not that great. Three sort of middle-aged guys... Didn't qualify, never came close, despite the fact that I've always liked it, and um, I still listen to it from time to time now. A real shame. Another non-qualification for the Dutch. Song 4, Belgium. This missed out by one or two points, pretty much. This was Witloof Bay with With Love Baby. Very different entry, this. It finished 11th with 53 points. It was a cappella, pretty much. Um, there was a beatboxer. The song itself, not that amazing. But it was different. It stood out. And, yeah, it's not that bad. But it's not superb. Song 5, Slovakia. This is a bit underrated, of course. In 2010, Slovakia were really underrated. And this one, I think, underrated a bit too. Twins! Uh, who had been at Eurovision in 2008 as the backing singers slash dancers for the Czech Republic, with I'm Still Alive, 
13th place, 48 points. I want to say that this was the... Well, the music video had football clips in it, if I remember. Because Slovakia were at the World Cup the year before, I think. Yes, anyway. This song, very nice. Not massively original, again. Um, but quite nice. And unlucky not to qualify, I think. 13th place, 48 points, yes. Song 9, Cyprus. Christos my Lordos with San Agelos Sagapisa, which means, I don't know, something about angels. I'm really sorry, I haven't got the translations in front of me. Um, performed in Greek, 18th place, 16 points. There was this whole thing where he and his backing singers were like leaning forwards and swaying about. Um, and there was a woman swinging a ball around her head. Um, this is a nice song, but really very forgettable in the end. So it didn't qualify. Song 10, Bulgaria. Poly Genova, who of course would finish fourth in 2016. Co Co-host? No, she hosted it by herself. Junior Eurovision a few years ago. Na Inat. Again, I can't remember what this translates as. I think it means... Oh, there we are. In spite. Uh, a lot of people really like this one, but it didn't qualify. 12th place, 48 points. Good performance, good voice, a sort of rainy effect on the LED screen. Pretty good, but not amazing. Song 11, Macedonia. This was Rusinka, which means Russian Girl, by Vlatko Ilyevsky. 16th place, 36 points. This is quite a jaunty song. Um, doesn't really go anywhere. Um, vocally, maybe not that superb. Um, Vlatko very sadly passed away not so long ago. July of this year. He was 33. Um, real shame. I always, I always found this particular entry, again, to be a little bit underrated. But I can absolutely understand why I didn't qualify. Moving on, song 12, Israel, Dana International. The former winner from 1998 was back with Ding Dong. 15th place, 38 points. This is just really weak pop. Never really liked it. Um, she deserved a much better song. This was just totally average, if I'm being honest with you. Not much of a fan. Uh, song 16, Belarus. This was a very patriotic number. I Love Belarus, performed by Anastasia Vinikova. 14th place, 45 points. Actually, not that bad. Um, it, if I remember correctly, there was quite a lot going on on stage. Um, but not a bad song. Just... It was quite in your face, I guess, the message of it. And song 17, what an underrated entry this is. Latvia, music, two guys, with Angel in Disguise. 17th place, 25 points, really underrated. Quite a cool, contemporary little song. Really nicely performed. The lyrics, maybe nothing amazing there. Luscious thighs, mentioned at one point. But, uh... A really good song. I'm surprised it didn't do better. Anyway, moving on to the final. How long is this video? 13 minutes. Like I said at the start, I do apologise for waffling. But here we go. 25 songs in the grand final. And here we go. Song 1, Finland. A ballad. Da Da Dam by Paradise Oscar. Real name, Axel Enström. 21st place. 57 points. That's quite low, but it did open the show. People were going to forget it, and I think they did. Uh, the backdrop sort of showed Earth, sort of rising up. Very nicely done. Uh, vocally, it wasn't bad. The song's sort of about how we need to do more to save the Earth. We need to be a bit more environmentally savvy, that sort of thing. Really nice song underrated in the end. Song 2, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Dino Merlin, back for a second bite of the Eurovision cherry after a duo uh, in 1999 with Beatrice. This was Love in Rewind, sixth place, really good, for a song performing second. 125 points, good song this, catchy, likeable. Um, Maya Sar, who would represent Bosnia the following year, was playing the keyboard, I think. 
There was a man playing the triangle, a dancer that seemed quite out of place, actually, but a really good song. Song three, brilliant. Denmark, A Friend in London, New Tomorrow, fifth place, 134 points. The band are no longer together, but I liked their stuff for quite a while after the contest. This was sort of indie rock, I guess. I don't really know how to describe it. Um, the lead singer, Tim, I believe his name is, kicked an inflatable ball into the audience at one point. The song's really good. Again, lyrically quite simple, nothing truly groundbreaking happening there, but the song's really, really terrific. And it finished fifth with 134 points. But if I recall, the public put it 18th in their side of the vote. It was third in the jury vote. So once again, the jury's saving the day. Song 4, Lithuania, Evelina Sashenko with Say Mavi, It's My Life. A ballad, like something straight out of a West End musical, a surprise qualifier, 19th place, 63 points. There was something very nice about this performance, and that was in the second verse when she performed sign language. I thought that was a very nice touch. Otherwise, very, very forgettable. Song 5, Hungry, fan favourite that flopped. Again, this was Hungry, yes, Catty Wolf with What About My Dreams. 22nd place, 53 points. Pop, big pop song. She was wearing a blue dress that I was never much of a fan of. Um, the crowd were really loving it. The fans loved it before the contest. I liked it, I still like it, but it really didn't do that well. I'm not sure why. The running order position? Possibly. Song 6, Ireland. Well, loads of people were talking about Jedwood. Jedwood were on a series of The X Factor here in Britain, and they were seen as a joke, and yet they kept getting voted through by the public week after week until they were eventually booted off. And they're not really doing much these days, but back in 2011, they were somewhat well-known in Britain and Ireland, and this song that they had for Eurovision back then called Lipstick... It's actually a pretty good song, in all honesty. It's pop, and it was performed quite well, energetic, ly lyrically okay, vocally maybe not that brilliant. Um, I remember one backing vocalist, a female, she sounded very out of place. I don't know if any of you remember that, but there was one female backing vocalist who sounded a bit off from the rest. Anyway, 8th place, 119 points. One of Ireland's best results for a long, long time. And, yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Jedwood at all, but the song actually wasn't that bad. Song 7, Sweden. This was the song I thought was going to win, and I think a lot of people expected it to win, but, of course, it didn't. 3rd place, 185 points. A pop song. Again, I mentioned the lyrics, because they're not that great. Um... Eric Sada was the singer, young guy, the song's called Popular, um, he was sort of very charismatic and good looking and he had dancers and the whole thing was very slick, so obviously it was going to do well and I really did think it was going to win, it's my favourite from 2011 as a matter of fact, but in the end, third place, still not a bad result. Song 8, another one of my favourites, a fan favourite that flopped, there's a surprise, Estonia, Getarjani, who I believe is the Eurovision singer out of all of the contests, I think, who is closest to me in age. She's three days older than me. The song's called Rockefeller Street. Uh, 24th place. That's harsh. 44 points. The performance was okay. There were sort of cardboard cutouts of skyscrapers i think i can't quite remember a couple of dancers who were actually quite annoying there was this whole thing with a rose at the end good song but i think let down by so so staging and in the end people preferred other stuff clearly there was this whole thing with a magic wand as well um ninth place not ninth place oh man I'm waffling a lot now. Song 9, apologies. Greece, Lucas Yorkas featuring Stereo Mike. This was sort of two songs in one. Uh, there was a bit of rap involved. I've never really liked this song, 
but lots of people do. Watch My Dance, seventh place, another top ten finish for Greece. They were in a good run of form at the time, 120 points. Yeah, it's a powerful song, but I've never really liked it. That's all I can say. Song 10, Russia. I think they were really disappointed with this result. Alexei Vorobyov, who I believe goes by the name of Alex Sparrow, with Get You for Russia, 16th place, 77 points. I mean, Russia finishing 16th? I think that was a bit surprising at the time. Uh, this was pop, slick. Um, he had a light-up jacket. So did his backing dancers. There was a fair bit of choreography, moving screens. Not bad, but not brilliant. Song 11, France. I really thought this was going to push for the win. It never came close. It was performed in Corsican, a classical type of song by Mauri Vassili. The song was called Sonu, which means dream, I think. Yes, 15th place. That's quite poor for what was a, t a song tipped to win. 82 points. I thought it was a great performance, you know, a changing sky backdrop, atmospheric, powerful, vocally brilliant, but maybe too different to push for the win. People just didn't appreciate it much. Song 12, The Returning Italy. It's jazz, and it finished second, and it just goes to show that you can send any genre and you might just win, or certainly come close. Italy were well behind in the voting and then surged up and finished second right at the death. Raphael Gualazzi with Madness of Love performed in Italian and English. Second place, 189 points. It actually won the jury vote, but the public thought less of it. Great song, though. I think I appreciate it more and more as I get older. It really is a classy, professional entry. Different and good. Song 13. Now, this is a great Eurovision song. Switzerland, returning to the final after some years away. This was Anna Rossinelli with In Love for a While. There was a guy playing the cello, I think it was. No, it wasn't the cello, it was the double bass. Uh, and there were Bubbles. This finished last, 25th, 19 points. Ridiculous. The song's great. It's charming, it's fun, it's cute. Maybe too cute? I don't know. But it's really lovely. Yes... It's low on lyrics. There was this whole la-la-la bit going on, if I recall. But a really, really lovely song. Last place, a joke, if you ask me. Song 14, The United Kingdom. A UK entry I actually like? Never. This was Blue, a boy band who were much bigger in the 90s. They had a lot of success in the UK and further afield. But by 2011, I think people had forgotten them a bit. Lee Ryan, one member of the group, has done a lot of reality stuff. I think he was on this series of Strictly Come Dancing here in Britain. Um, Duncan James, the lead singer, was in a soap, uh, a soap opera here in, if you want to call it a soap opera, here in Britain as well, up until recently. Is he still in it? I'm not sure. I don't think so. Anyway, the song was called I Can. Pop song, fairly repetitive, but actually very good. They had screens on stage showing their faces, green colour scheme. Lee Ryan was really going for those high notes. Not sure if he hit them terribly well, though. 11th place, yes, 100 points. Actually a pretty good result. And I should point out that in the jury vote, the UK finished in the bottom four. In the public vote, top five. So it evened out at 11th place. The juries screwed us over. It's usually the public, but in 2011 it was the juries. A really good British entry, actually. Good stuff. Song 15, Moldova. Stop Shizdub, who performed the very first Moldovan entry in 2005. They were back with So Lucky. This was all over the place. There was a unicycle. There was a monocle. Um, there was a trumpet, I think. Something like that. 12th place. That's quite generous. I used to really love this song, but I've gone well off it in the years since. 97 points. Yeah. That's a bit overrated in the end, isn't it? I'm not sure many people really like that song. Anyway, got to move on. Song 16, The Host Nation, Germany. Lena, defending her crown. Beautiful, beautiful Lena. Taken by a stranger. 10th place, 107 points. This is an example of a song that I didn't think anything of at the time, but now I really enjoy it. Uh, it was a great performance. Um, you had backing dancers in 
morph suits, I think they're called, all in silver. Uh, Lena was all in black, looking, you know, vamping it up with the makeup and everything. She looked really good, actually. Um, sultry stuff, uh, a mysterious melody, very different. It stood out, and in fact, it probably should have done a bit better than 10th place, but there we are. Uh, Lena's a really big star in Germany. She's had a lot of success. Uh, song 17, Romania, Hotel FM. The lead singer, British. The song was called Change, 17th place, 77 points. I think this is a very average song, but it's upbeat and it's hard not to like. 17th place, about right. There was a piano. Yeah, not bad. Song 18, Austria. Nadine Baylor with The Secret Is Love. Young woman, great voice. Ballad, nothing we haven't heard before though. Nothing we hadn't heard before at the time. 18th place, 64 points. This did very well with the juries, but really, really badly with the public. 24th with the public, 5th with the jury. Such differences, even then. And it finished 18th with 64 points, like I said. It's okay, but... It's not that memorable. The winner, I'll leave for a minute. Song 20, Slovenia. This is a huge fan favourite today. People love this, and yet the public barely voted for it. 22nd place with the public, 4th with the jury. Such a difference again. This was No One, performed in English by... Oh dear, I'm going to mess up this pronunciation. Maya Kuich. Kuich. Apologies. Anyway, she's known as Amaya as well. She's 26. Beautiful, beautiful woman. It was a great performance. It's a good song. 13th place. 96 points. Quite sassy. Really quite good. Uh, song 21, Iceland. So the story with this, Sigurjón Brink, he was set to perform this in the Icelandic National Final or the Icelandic Selection. He passed away at the start of 2011. So his friends teamed up sang the song, went to Eurovision. Shawnee's friends with Coming Home. Um, a really sing-along type of song, if you see what I mean. Um, really quite pleasant. Um, a little bit folky. 20th place, as expected, really. 61 points. If I recall, um, one or two of the members of the band had been at Eurovision before as part of, I think it was just one member, he was part of Too Tricky, who represented Iceland in 2001, I think. Anyway, song 22, Spain. This is a great song, but it was never going to do that well. Kemakitin lo bailao, may they take from me when I've danced. I think, may they take from me when I've danced, may they not take from me when I've danced. Apologies, I'm casting my mind back here to 2011. Lucia Perez, the singer. Very Spanish, this song. What else can I say? Uh, 23rd place, not great. Again, for the Spanish in Eurovision. 50 points. It's a good song, though. It's catchy, it's fun, it's colourful, it's likeable. You can get up and dance to it. Song 23, Ukraine. This is ridiculous. Fourth place? Never. It finished fourth with 159 points. I can't believe it. Meek and Newton with Angel. There was a woman making pictures out of sand on stage. That was quite cool. But the song itself, I don't think is that remarkable. Fourth place? That's generous. I mean, maybe you completely disagree with me, but at the time, I was watching the voting and I thought Ukraine might win this and I would be gobsmacked. They didn't, of course. But fourth place? No, 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 I don't think so. Song 24, Serbia. Great song this. A bit of a retro feel. Nina with Charoban, which means magical. Performed in Serbian, 14th place, not bad, 85 points. Uh, again, a really likeable song. Vintage is the best way to describe it. Dated, but in a good way. And song 25, this was a rock song performed by Eldrine, 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 who cares? For Georgia, One More Day, 9th place, 110 points. That's a really good result for a song that a lot of people didn't really think much of at the time. Um... Lots of flashing lights, uh, a, a guitarist that kept shouting, if I recall. Female lead singer, not bad, 
not brilliant. How many times have I said that? Anyway, the phone's ringing. Do I answer it? Don't think so. You can probably hear it, but I'm not going to answer it. Uh, song 19 was the winner. Azerbaijan. This was L and Nikki with Running Scared. A surprise winner? Maybe. But I think the bookmakers thought it was in with a chance, and I thought it was in with a chance. Uh, Nikki, I think, um, was born in Azerbaijan, but is based in Britain. Yes, I think so. Anyway, um, vocally, I don't think it was that amazing. And yes, it's a bit cliched, a bit soppy, if you see what I mean. It's not a classic Eurovision winner. A lot of people really don't like it. It's one of my favourites, though. Um, simple staging. But, yeah. First place, 221 points. It won fairly convincingly in the end. It just pulled ahead. Uh, I thought Sweden had it in the bag. But no, Azerbaijan won. It's their only win. It was about time they won because they had been doing well in the years leading up to this. Yeah. Yeah. But a lot of people, not a fan. So there we go. I don't really have anything else to say. That's my thoughts on the 2011 contest. This is, this is the CD, which you can get online. Feel Your Heartbeat was the theme. Sort of a purple colour scheme. Dusseldorf. There, there it is. Fantastic. The contest has never been staged in Berlin. Can you believe it? Um, maybe it will, if Germany win again in the future. And who knows? Maybe they will next year. Fourth this year. Um, yes, semi-final one. Norway would have qualified had it not been for the juries. And Turkey would have qualified had it not been for the juries. And Armenia would have qualified had it not been for the juries. Lithuania won the jury vote in semi-final one, 11th with the public. Uh, Switzerland, yeah. San Marino last with the televoters, Portugal last with the jury. Just trying to see if there are any... Iceland third with the jury. That's really good. Anyway, San Marino would have qualified in the jury vote if it had been 100% jury, of course. Semi-final two, Sweden won the public vote. Slovenia won the jury vote. Um, Latvia last with the juries. Ridiculous. Netherlands last with the public. Ridiculous. Um, Israel would have qualified if 100% televote. Belarus would have qualified too. If it had been 100% jury, we would have seen Slovakia and Belgium in the final. Yes, we would. Okay, moving on to the final, very briefly. Uh, like I said, I've already mentioned the difference between the UK, Slovenia and Austria. Um, Italy finished 11th with the televoters. France, 15th. Denmark, 18th. That's so low. Ridiculous. You do need the juries, I think. Uh, Switzerland, two points. Outrageous. Russia, last with the jury. That's a that's quite harsh. That's quite surprising, but there we are. Um, I thought Finland would have done better. Um, Ukraine, I don't get it at all. Ireland did well in the jury vote. Better than the public. Yes. Yes. It's interesting because a lot of people say that the jury underrate Italy every year. And the year in which Italy actually do very well with the jury... It's the public who screw them over. So, you know, I think Italy will win within the next five years, and I hope they do, because they deserve to. Same with Belgium, who should have qualified this year. Feel free to watch a video on my channel where I react to the semi-final results from this year's contest and freak out when Belgium don't make it. I have just about recovered. It's taken many months. Um, but yes, there we are. I'm going to stop waffling now. Of course, the following year's contest would be in Baku, and I will make a video talking about that in the near future. Let me know your thoughts. Should Azerbaijan have won? Should Italy have won? Should the UK have won? Should Switzerland have not finished last? Should they have finished last? Was Ukraine overrated? What do you think about San Marino? Blah, 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 blah. Let me know. Leave a comment. Feel free to subscribe, although I don't upload that often. I have made that clear many times in the past. And, yes, I think that's it. I do apologise for waffling, any stumbling over words, that sort of thing. If that happened, I apologise. This video is far too long. I'm going to upload it now. Enjoy. And until next time... Actually, two more things I want to mention. Apologies. Number one, obviously, 
it's sort of getting closer to the national final season for 2019. I might be making videos about that. If you'd like to see me make a video talking about some of my favourite underrated Eurovision entries of my lifetime, so 1993 to the present, uh, let me know. Maybe you want to hear me talk about songs that I think have been overrated in my lifetime. Again, let me know. Also, forgot to mention with the Danish entry that... Um, there was a song in the Danish national final that year called Sleepless by Anne Noah, and it's one of my all-time favourite national final entries. Love it. Always really liked it. What is Anne Noah doing now? I'd like to know. If you're Danish, let me know, because maybe you'll know better than I do. I have tried to find out. I've tried to find other songs. There's nothing. There's not even a Wikipedia page. Can you believe it? That is it now, because I'm really starting to lose the plot. A long video, many apologies. Until next time, thank you very much for watching.